Hello, welcome back to our interviews. Today I'm joined by Tim Brett, the Scottish Liberal Democrat Party. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I think we'd like to start off then with why are you personally running for the North East Fire seat? Good question. Um, I'm running because I've worked closely with Samin Campbell, the previous MP. All of the students will know Samin as he's the Chancellor of the University and he's been a very good Member of Parliament for the last 28 years. I'm a councillor and I've, I'm leader of the Liberal Democrat group on Fife Council. Um, and when Sir Ming announced that he was going to retire, a number of our members approached me and said, would I be interested in standing? Um, so that's why I'm here. I've lived in North East Fife for, over well, for nearly 30 years and all of our three children came to school here in St Andrews at Madras College. So you mentioned Sir Ming, he's been there since 1987. Are you offering more of the same or is it something new for the Liberal Democrats here? I'll be, I mean, I'm obviously standing as, as a Liberal Democrat um, and with the, the manifesto that we, we, we have, I'm sure you'll ask me about that in a minute. Um, I'll be a bit different uh, because I am living within the constituency. Um, my background is a bit different. My background is in, in the health service and also in social care as I chaired the council's uh, uh, social, social work committee. Um, but in other respects, I'd want to carry on the good work that Sir Ming has done. I'd want to be available to people you know, on a regular basis through surgeries. And I'm very anxious to keep in touch with people uh, as I try to do now as, as a councillor. Uh, a lot's changed then since 2010 when Sir Ming got 44% of the vote. Uh, the SNP have taken over in the Scottish Parliament here and they're now predicting about around 50% of the vote across Scotland. Why do you think it's been such a shift towards that? Well, I, I think it's come as a surprise to people, yes. Um, I mean, one of the positive things about the referendum was, was, was the level of engagement. Um, I was, in fact, leading the Better Together campaign and in North East Fife there was a much larger support for the Better Together campaign. But as you've said, and everybody knows, the support for the SNP uh, has, has continued uh, to rise, and they're certainly currently in a strong position. Uh, you mentioned the referendum then. Is that something that you consider now finished, because it was a no vote, whereas Nicola Sturgeon is saying that it will one day be independent Scotland? It certainly isn't finished. I mean, you just have to look at the, the primary aim and objective of the SNP, which is an independent Scotland. And I think Nicola let it out of the bag in one of the TV debates last week uh, when she certainly said that she wouldn't rule out um, a further referendum. I think that's sad. I mean, yes, I think it was Alex Salmond who said that this was a once-in-a-generation decision. But what really concerns me is the way in which it divided the community divided our society last week and I'm still seeing that when I knock on doors now you know a, a simple thing like saying to somebody one of our supporters would you put up a poster people are saying no I'm worried I'm, 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 con I'm con concerned about that there was also a huge impact on business um, who weren't sure what the decision was going to be um, and just on ordinary people's lives. People couldn't sell their houses in the run-up to the referendum you know, because nobody knew what was going to happen. So I really don't want us to get back into that again. What I wanted was further powers for a stronger Scotland, which I'm very pleased to say we're going to get. Uh, just sticking with the SNP briefly for another moment, um, part, a lot of your campaign seems to be about telling people you're there as opposed to the SNP and to stop the SNP. Is, is that something you see as a problem with the SNP rise, that they could do something you don't want for Scotland? Or is it more a concern with the rise that there is a potential that a lot of people will vote for them and not wanting to lose the seat? Well, I think the honest answer is it's, it's, a, it's a bit of both. I mean, there's a lot of positive things about what the Liberal Democrats want to do. I'm very happy to talk about those. I mean, we've, we've obviously, as part of the coalition, we have worked to restore the economy. There's been an extra 180,000 jobs in Scotland alone. Things are clearly improving. Things are on the up. Um, we've had figures this week showing that the number of people unemployed in North East Fife has fallen by 24%. Um, whereas our opponents, I think, are still trying to, uh, to, to rubbish that and to, to play that down. If you look back from where we were five years ago, things have substantially improved. 
but we also want a fairer society. And what we've done in that respect is that we were the party that advocated raising the, the tax threshold so that huge numbers of people are now no longer paying tax and, and many students will be moving into the job market and so that, that will mean more money for you when you get your first jobs. And we want to extend that further so that you know, people on lower incomes are, are, not, are not paying tax. So that's, that's very positive too. Plus we want to put money into education, we want to put money into health. The SNP on the other hand, as I've already said, their primary objective we know is independence for Scotland, but they're proposing huge additional extra borrowing. When in fact, I think if they're being honest, they know that none of the other parties are actually going to go along with that. And given that we've still got a problem with the deficit, you know, is it actually sensible that we go and take out an extra 180 billion of loans to try and resolve that? I suspect most of your viewers will say, hmm, I really don't think so, because that's just going to get us into a bigger hole, and all we're going to do is pass on to your generation the problem of solving the problem. Uh, there is already a lot of debt on the weights of our, our viewers as students, and another raise that came out of the coalition that is a very prickly point for a lot of the student body here in St Andrews, but mainly in England, is that of uh, tuition fees that have gone up, and that was something that had been promised that wouldn't go up. Is that something that maybe the Liberal Democrats might regret, or is it something that you would still stand by? We made a pledge. Everybody knows that, and we weren't able to deliver it. Um, there are only what, just over 50 Liberal Democrat MPs. 9% of the MPs at Westminster were Liberal Democrats. You know, I very much regret, as, as they did, that we couldn't deliver that. But what we have got now in England, remember this doesn't apply here in Scotland, um, is a system which I think is fairer. Uh, nobody pays up front. You know, we now have more, more, more students going to university than ever before. And critically, we have more from poorer backgrounds. And that is actually much higher in England than it is here in Scotland. And, oh, and by the way, you don't start paying back on that un until you're earning £21,000, and that is higher than it is in Scotland. If you're a Scottish student, you pay back sooner uh, than, 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 you, than you would in England. So my concern is actually for the University of St Andrews because I think there is a real danger that St Andrews funding could start to lag behind. And this is a fantastic university, not just in Scotland, not just in the UK, but this is an international university. You, you know that, look at the number of overseas students that are attracted to come here. But if the funding starts to reduce because St Andrews is at a disadvantage, as I fear it might be, then I've got real, real worries and concerns. Uh, another source of concern economically for students, but also locals here, and it came out of the student elections as a big problem for many, is the condition of student housing and just general housing in St Andrews being yeah quite high, unaffordable and not really much of it. Is there a solution to this? Yep, it's a, I was going to say it's a problem that we've had for years um, and it, people have strong feelings about this and it's divided the town. As probably most of your viewers will know, there have recently been two if not three reports on the situation and a moratorium was introduced, I think, two, three years ago on the further extension of HMOs. Um, what we need to do is, is have more student accommodation. And that is happening to some extent. The university, I know, are building more, and there are the two large private developments. But I do know, and I'm concerned, how expensive they are going to be for people uh, to, to live in. But there needs to be an ongoing dialogue with the university you know, I and the town would say to the university, you can't keep on increasing the numbers of students and then just expect that everybody's going to be housed. And the other drawback of this, of course, is that because the rents are so high, it's very difficult for non-students to find accommodation. And we do need accommodation, you know, because there's an awful lot of jobs needed in St Andrews, you know, not just at the university, but also in tourism and other things. So it, it's, a, it's a thorny problem. I'm encouraged because there is, I think, goodwill on both sides to sit down and, and to try and address the problem, um, but it won't go away. So moving away from problems and to solutions now, uh, you've been on the Five Council since 2003. What have you done within that space of time and what have you brought about in the role? I first went on the council when I was sort of in employment, so I wasn't able to do as much in my first four years as I would have liked.
For the next five years I chaired the Social Work Committee and I'm proud of what we achieved there. We actually won national awards. Um, both in Scotland we had the, there was a report came out called Making the Grade and not just Fife Council but all care services in Fife were judged to be the best in Scotland. Um, there was also a survey done on a UK wide basis and, and slightly to my surprise Fife was judged to be the, the best place for social care of anywhere in the UK. Um, we did that and we, we balanced the budget each year despite the pressures uh, that are on the service. I would compare that now with the present Labour administration who've overspent the social work budget by 16 million. So I'm pleased about that but I'm also pleased about what I've achieved locally. Um, in my own ward, my ward is what's called the Tay Bridgehead Ward which is Newport, Wormit, Tayport, Lucas, Guardbridge and Balmallow where I hope I've supported and served the local community in all sorts of ways. Local councils get involved in all sorts of things. Um, you know, developing play parks, improvements at schools um, and generally helping and assisting local residents whenever they put issues or problems. Um, I'm delighted that the University bought the Guardbridge Mill site, which I hope you'll be aware of, and that it's going to be developed as a green energy centre. That's very exciting and I've been very supportive of that. And there is huge potential on the rest of the site as it's a very big site and the I know that the University have got exciting plans for that, uh, for bringing in companies who are linked to uh, green energy and that, that sort of thing. So looking forward to seeing those plans come into fruition. I was also very involved with RAF Lucas, which is in my ward. Sadly we weren't able to retain the RAF here, but on the upside we are getting the army coming. Um, in the next few months we're going to have three units coming to Lucas. Uh, from Germany, so there will be a, you know, a continuation of service personnel um, there. But we live in a very beautiful part of the country. Um, I'm very keen that we maintain that, we keep that. Lib Dems are very keen on the environment and uh, in our manifesto, if you look at it, you'll see there's going to be five new green laws. So all of those uh, are important. One of the other things I do is chair a group that um, oversees the Eden Estuary, that's around Guardbridge and Lucas, because that's an important um, site uh, for migrating birds. Um, so I'm, I'm keen to protect that as well. Okay, then finally, um, how are you approaching your campaign then up in the run up for the next two weeks? And if people are feeling inspired from this, how can they maybe get involved? Thank you for that. Well, we've been actually working very hard, not we've been working very hard for the last year. Um, by doing what Lib Dems do best, which is going out and talking to people. I and my team have knocked on every, virtually every door in North East Fife and we're going round for the second or third time because you can't beat actually talking to people directly, listening to their concerns and, and explaining your, um, your policy. So we're continuing to do that. Um, I, haven't, I suspect many of your viewers will have seen some of our literature. We've, we've, we've put out a lot of uh, information um, and we're also putting out letters at, at, at present moment. Anybody who's got some time and who can help us, um, please do get in touch. We've got a, an office in Cooper on 01334 656 361 and we'd be delighted to have your support. Well, thank you very much, Tim Brett. Thank you very much.